everyone. It's Ann Tilly, a uh, textile member at the Forge. Bam. Check out my stickers. Don't be jealous. And we had a request for a um, serger orientation on how to thread the serger. And um, so I just thought I would make this uh, overall serger orientation video. Um, you don't, there's some tricks that you can potentially get away with so that you don't have to thread the machine in its entirety every time. Um, but I will show it since it was requested. Um, they, the people who, the people, sergers were designed, they weren't really designed to be easily threaded. Um, they, the way that they work is you've got an, one needle thread, sometimes there's two needle threads, and then you've got an upper looper and a lower looper. So basically each of those loopers has an arm that moves with the machine and creates a loop. And when it comes in like this, the needle comes down and catches it. And then it comes back out again and starts to create its next loop. And it's hard. I mean, it, you'll feel like your fingers are like way too big, but you, you'll have some buddies. You definitely are going to need a pair of tweezers. And we've got in the drawers over by the office door, there is a well-labeled uh, drawer that says tweezers. So that is definitely an important tool. And um, yeah, so the first thing that I'm going to show you is... You know, the first thing you want to do is turn the machine on. Boom. This is a wonderful machine. It's very, very quiet. So I did write a big note on here, which it's fading a little bit because it's being so well sanitized, to remind you to turn the machine off because it's so quiet that it's really easy to leave it on. So make sure, you know, whenever you come to the machine, you turn it on and off. You take, take back all the materials that you put out. Anyways. So th this is also a cool machine and I don't know if I can show it, but there is also a speed guy, uh, a speed um, dial on the, on the motor here. And we typically have it set at the lowest speed and that's probably going to be best for everyone. So maybe I better not show you where the speed control is. <laughs> don't want to scare you too much. Okay. So the first, I'll show you the, the cheating way. It's not even cheating. I'll show you the quick way to re-thread a machine. So I'm going to take this spool, I'm going to cut the thread, take it off the stand, put my new thread on, and then take the tail of my new thread with my old thread, just like that, and I do a quick knot like this, just a quick knot to hold those two together. And then what we'll do is we'll pull these knotted threads through until our new thread color comes in and that's your quick way to thread the serger. Okay, so thread, hopefully I'm not blocking myself. Okay, there we go. Okay, so now what I like to do is let's get our this is our presser foot. The presser foot always stays down. And actually something unique about this machine in particular is that it's got a foot press to lift the presser foot, okay? So I find a common mistake that people make is they sit here and they think that this is for their right foot and then this is for their left foot. Think about it like a car and you're just gonna use your right foot for both. So. We'll, we want to get this foot out of our way. So there is this lever here, and when you push it down, it's spring-loaded. When you push it down, now you can just swing this out of your way. Okay? And I need to pull this needle thread, and I'm going to pull it, and you can see... Well, eventually, when it comes down, you'll see the, see how the white thread's coming in. And sometimes it'll get stuck here at the tension discs. And instead of yanking to where you could potentially break the thread, I usually will just take my fingernail and just kind of open the disc just to help me get that thread through. And see, now there we are. We've got our white thread. I can clip the knot off. And now 
run it through my needle, just like that. Okay, so now we need to do the same thing for the upper and low, lower looper. So I'm gonna pull the tails, and you'll see, they'll come on camera eventually. Okay, there's our white. See if they pop through, they do fine. Sometimes they can get a little jammed when they start to get to the looper. So we'll just kind of take our time. Ah, there they are, great. So now, it's almost like I didn't know if it would work. <laughs> it worked! Just kidding, I knew it was gonna work. I believed in myself. Okay, so now all of our threads are threaded. All we have to do is put the foot back on and it's not gonna go on unless I push this lever back down and you wanna make sure it's all the way in there. If it's not all the way in there, you can potentially hit, uh, the needle can hit it or you're just not gonna be able to sew well. So that's the quick way. So now, are y'all y'all dare me to do it? Should I do it? I don't know. Does she have the guts? I'm gonna cut them all and we're gonna pull them all out just like this. Do, 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 do. Ah! Okay, so let's say that you have no threads in your machine. Okay, I'm gonna show you how to thread it. I'm gonna make sure I'm gonna go ahead and turn the machine off just Oh, it was off. I'm gonna turn the machine off just in case, like if I'm not paying attention and I accidentally step on the foot, I don't wanna hurt myself. So I make sure the machine's off. Okay, so now we need to get into the machine. So we've got our little door lift that has a magnetic closure. So we're gonna open this up. And we're gonna knock over everything that's over here. So just plan on doing that. And then I've got a little canned air because this is also a good time to clean the machine. So, it's like all in here. So now this, it's spring loaded. So you should just be able to push it and then pull it forward, okay? And then I'm just gonna give it a good clean out, especially because it's gonna make it easier for us to see what we're doing here. Oh, what a nice pull. Okay, you can also do this, which is, it won't be super necessary for us when we're threading this machine in particular, but you can push this and this also slides open so you can get a good view. Might be able to get some more cleaning in here. Pretty much the most important way to take care of a sewing machine is just to keep dust off of it, keep moisture off of it, and keep it well lubricated because those high moving metal parts like lubrication. Okay, so the beginning is just gonna be guiding our thread to the needle in the looper. So that's what this, this is simply a thread guide. And what it's doing is it's pulling the thread directly above the cone, pulling it straight up. That's the way that the cone wants to be pulled. So we're gonna pick that up. We're gonna thread it back to front. And I'll go ahead and do all three of them since I'm up here. And hopefully you won't have to thread this machine from scratch, but it'll be a good, it's a good lesson to just know it. And it's, and you know, I think a lot of people get really intimidated by this step, um, but you know, just a little patience goes a long way. <laughs> Don't tell me to be patient, Ann. Sorry, it helps. It really does. Okay, here we've got our thread guides and you can actually kind of see, oh, it's just dirt actually. That's why it's, ah. Okay, so these are simply just thread guides that are helping us come down. So you'll come in the way that the thread wants to come in, which is top to bottom. She says as she falters, and then forward and back. And now it's gonna go straight down. And this is just gonna help it get kinks out as it goes. And I'll go ahead and do all three of these since I'm here. I'm gonna go loop-de-loop. Just helps kind of keep the thread straight, keep it from getting too um, loopy and, and like sometimes uh, it can dance a little bit. Okay, so you've got your thread guides here. So now we're ready to start to diverge. So we've got our needle thread. Let's start with our needle thread. That's an easy win, right? And the uh, ultimate trick and this is going to be in all sergers, no matter what, how fancy they are. 
is they're always going to have you a thread guide. So in this scenario, they're showing you that the red thread is the needle thread. Then they've got like sort of a yellow thread for the upper looper and then a blue thread for the lower looper. So you've always got your helping friend there. So here we again have thread guides. So I'm not going to bother. I mean, you could wrap this around and go through there again. Honestly, I'm just going to go straight down. I think it'll probably be fine. Again, this is just a thread guide. So it's not like if you don't thread that thread guide, the machine's going to not operate. I'm also going to hit these tension discs in a little bit of, oh yeah, oh yeah, that's rewarding. That's rewarding. Okay. So now we're, we're entering our first tension disc and tension is super important when it comes to thread. So we just want to make sure it's getting all the way in there. If you're not sure, you can open it with your fingernail and just make sure it gets in there. Then you've got another thread guide here to the left of the tension disc. And, and here, see, this is when our tweezers and already start coming in handy when our fingers start to feel a little big. And this is what we've got. Okay. So now we've got a thread guide here. Ta-da. And a thread guide, this like weird big thing. We're just gonna get through it. And actually you can see that there's a red dot right here on this tension disc. And there's a red dot here on this thread guide. So that's a good sign that we're in going in the right direction, right? Red, red. Okay. Went through here. And now I need to go down through this little hole. Okay. And then we're home free. We're ready to thread the needle front to back. There we go. If you ever want to change the needle on this machine, you need a hex wrench, a very small hex wrench that goes in right here. And these machines are a little bit different than home sewing machines because they don't have that nice flat edge that tells you the right direction for that the needle goes. You just need to know that the eye is coming towards you. And the other thing is you need to make sure that the needle's all the way up in the machine. If the needle's not all the way up in the right position, it won't catch the loops and you'll have skip stitches. So that's, if you ever have skip stitches, that's a good thing to check right there. Okay, so now we're ready to do our upper looper. We'll go easiest to hardest. Usually the lower looper is the beast. So again, my fingers feel large, so I'm going to use my tension discs, I might use my tweezers, rather, and I'm just going to make sure that gets all the way in there. You can even use your tweezers to help you open that. And then you've got two holes right here. So we've come through the tension disc and we've come down here and you can see these yellow dots correspond with the yellow color here, although it's so faded now, but there at one point it was yellow. At this point, I'm pretty much always using my tweezers instead of my hands. So the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna kind of do a zigzag motion. So we're gonna start with this lower thread guide, and then we're gonna go to the upper thread guide here, this that also has a yellow dot, and then back down to this thread guide down here that has is next to a yellow dot. This is a good reason to have that compressed air handy. And you know, then it gets the oil in it. And then I kind of like the oil. Sometimes I'll rub it on my knuckles if I need it. Yay, yay. Okay. So now we're ready to kind of get to where we're actually threading it through the upper looper. So if you can't see, like right now I can't see the upper looper. So I'm gonna get my hand on the flywheel here to the right, right here. And I'm gonna turn it until I see the upper looper. And there it is. And you can, I mean, you know, sewing machines, I think sometimes people get really intimidated by them, but they're really just basic mechanisms, right? So see here, see this, all this thread guide is, is bringing the thread up so that it's in alignment. So see, this is like your next step. So it's almost like connect the dots, right? 
So I don't think this has any yellow dots on it, but this is the upper looper. And we, we're gonna come in through here, okay? And then there's gonna be one more spot. So see, I can't see the other end of this looper. So what I'm doing is I'm using my hand to help me find it. Ah, there it is. So see at the other end, there's the last piece of the puzzle, that one hole. So again, you know, these machines were not really designed to make your life easy, unfortunately. Home sewing machines do a much better job of trying to make this an easier job. But ultimately, I hate to say it, but just practice. Practice and being fearless and knowing that you're capable of doing it. So right now, all I'm trying to do is just get this thread up here to meet this upper looper. Okay, and don't let it catch on anything. We just want it to be going straight from that one side. Okay, now, now I'm home free. Now I can put it through that last loop and we are all good with the upper looper. So we've got our needle threaded. Actually, it's kind of caught on. Needle threader, upper looper. And really, we don't need this, but I just thought I'd show y'all. Okay, so now we're on the lower looper. Lower looper is usually the one that's the most obnoxious. So here we go. No fear, y'all, we can do this. So I'm gonna come down through our thread guide and into the tension disc. Another good idea is just, if you do see any dirt building up in the tension disc, it's good to keep that out of there. Sometimes you can just take a piece of fabric and kind of run it through there. So that just so that you know that your tension is gonna be stable. And you know that dust always gets the oil on it and gets sticky and just gotta try to keep it clean. Okay, so we're in the tension disc. And basically these are just two thread guides that are just helping make sure that the thread stays in the tension disc, right? So we're working with common sense concepts here. Okay, down the hatch. Here we go. Dicka, 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 dicka. Believe in yourself and know the thread will come out the bottom. Ha ha, here we are. Okay, so blue. I see a blue dot right here where it says H. I would tell you what H meant, but I'd have to kill you. Just kidding, I don't know what H means. I think it means, hey y'all. Okay, down the hole. Okay, I see that this is, uh, this is not the way I want it. Let's move that out of the way. So we wanna go through the blue looper marked blue. It is nice that they at least have that. And then you got your second one here. Now we're ready to go into the lower looper. Where is the lower looper? Let's find the lower looper. Oh, this is the lower looper right here. I almost didn't know what I was talking about. And y'all thought I knew what I was talking about. Okay, through this hole. Now this is the tricky part, okay? So what I do is I'm gonna put it through this hole and then I'm gonna, let's see, hopefully you can see everything. Maybe I'll move this a little closer. Okay, I'm gonna move this, okay, here we go. Now, see there's the lower looper right here. And when I come down, I can see the next hole I need to go in. So, I've got my first hole and I'm coming down to my second hole and I'm gonna use my tweezers to reach around. So we did need that open, didn't we? And I can't even see it, but I know it's there. So I'm just, there we go. Here it is. Okay, so we've made it to this side and we're actually on the back side of the looper right now. So now we need to, we need to thread this back to front. So let's see if I can do this and avoid the tripod. And y'all are gonna definitely have to send me tips for this one here. All right, got it. So now we need to go, so the, the lower looper is kind of shaped like this. So the first um, guide we went into was here and it went front to back and we were behind the looper and then we came back to front and now we need to go back through this looper. So again, we will find our flywheel and we'll bring it back okay see there we go there's our third hole 
right here in the lower looper. So now, again, blessed be thou tweezers. I've got this, pulled it back. Y'all might not ever wanna do this, but it is good to know it. And I don't like to think of anybody feeling intimidated or feeling like they can't do anything. So just takes a little time and patience and you can do it. So now I'm going to try to catch this thread and bring it up to meet all the other threads. And there you have it, folks. We have successfully threaded it. We have our three threads coming through, just like that. So now we can close the machine back up. So we'll pop this back shut and it'll just click. We'll close this back up. We need to return our presser foot to its right position. So get in there and then yuck, just like that. Close this and do I dare? Let me go get a scrap and we'll see if I did it. And two, this is not part of the machine, but there is a nice light that you can click on to help you see should you need it. Okay, truth, moment of truth. And I don't know, I don't know if how accurate this is, but I always like to start stitching into fabric. For some reason, I just feel like that's gonna give me a better chance. So here we go. Machine is on. And how about that? Now let's inspect it. So we're gonna sew off. And then I need my snips. And let's look. We did it. Okay. So this here that's going like this. You, 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 you. That's the upper looper. That one only had what? One or two guides. And then this was the B spec here, the lower looper, and it had the three guides. And then the needle kind of catches the loop. See how it, it stitches down and it catches the loop front to back? What a fabulous machine. How do you think they invented it? Who knows? So there you have it. That is the serger. And I hope that you all enjoy this wonderful tool. It's great for finishing the edge of a Anything that you feel like is fraying, it'll just make it look very clean. It can be used in place of a single needle machine. You can use it to hold two pieces of fabric together. When it comes to knitwear, you can, you can sew together t-shirts, leggings, anything stretchy and, it, and the stitches won't pop. It's a great machine. Just remember, turn it off when you're done. Have fun y'all, happy sewing.